It looks like NVIDIA is gearing up to release a new professional grade graphics card based on its Blackwell architecture. And it's not the 5090. No, that's not professional grade. It might cost a small fortune, but no, it's not professional grade. See what NVIDIA is doing there? This new one apparently is called the RTX Pro 6000X. So this card will feature a whopping 96 gigabytes of GDDR7 memory, which is, well, a lot more, to be honest, than the RTX 5090. The RTX 5090 only has 32 gigabytes of memory. I say only because in comparison to the 6000X, it's not much, is it? But in the grand scheme of things, if you are a gamer, 32 gigabytes is more than enough. So apparently this fancy new professional grade RTX Pro 6000X video card will be ideal for handling massive data sets and complex calculations required for AI and other professional applications. The memory, by the way, is connected via a 512-bit bus, so that will be screeching fast, ensuring rapid data transfer and processing, for sure it will. The card also will be very power hungry. The TBP, or the total board power, is roughly 625 watts. Of course, this is more than the RTX 5090. Now there's multi-variants of this. In addition to the 96 gigabyte model, there will also be a 46 gigabyte variant with a 384 bit memory interface. And of course this suggests that Nvidia is actually targeting a range of professional users with different needs and budgets. Any guesses on how much an Nvidia RTX Pro 6,000X video card will be tens of thousands of dollars, probably, right? If the RTX 5090 is going for 15,000 Canadian dollars on eBay, I did a video on that a while back, 20,000, $30,000? Where, where's it going to stop, I wonder? This is interesting. I mean, maybe this will be a really great performer with native, raw, true performance. But if it is terribly, terribly, terribly expensive, in other words, if it's the same price as a car, then it's going to cater to the rich and maybe a few reviewers that get hold of a card like this and... That's just not just you know just not right. Now I know this card is not targeted at the gamer, but there will be gamers who get this card. But again, it won't be your average person at home who can only really afford a couple grand, even if that for a gaming computer system, right? <laughs> yeah, it's hard to uh, it's hard to shop now for PC hardware and build a system a gaming system that is decent for under $2,000 with, you know, somewhat decent hardware in it. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. And a few years ago, if you spent two, maybe $3,000, you could get pretty much a top of the line system. And today you're looking at double that, maybe five to $6,000. Now I'm talking Canadian, but still it, it's, it's just terrible. It's terrible. And what it's going to do is going, it's going to push, I think, a lot of people away from building computer systems or and or pushing people away from NVIDIA. Then they'll maybe go to AMD. I think AMD is maybe not, it's not going to be as crazy when it comes to prices. Um, but, you know, new, new video cards from AMD and stuff, and CPUs for that matter, they're not going to be cheap. They're not. So it could push people away maybe from building computer systems altogether, PCs for gaming, maybe people will just go to consoles. And I'm I'm well aware I, I'm not a console gamer. I don't like consoles. I don't like the controller. I want to play on a PC. But I mean, if gamers get priced out of the market completely, what are we going to do? We're going to go 
we're probably going to be forced, no choice, but to go to a console. Because if a console can be sold and you can play games on it for five, six hundred bucks or even less than a thousand dollars, why wouldn't you? What are your thoughts on this? 